Okay, our last method of calculating enthalpy change will be by writing a balanced equation and using standard enthalpies of formation data. So I'll just draw your attention to the table on page 320, table 1. There you will find reference data that will be provided on the test and exam if there's a question involving standard enthalpies of formation. Okay, so formation reactions are new to you at this point. They haven't been formally introduced in the curriculum yet. So before we can even look at calculating the enthalpy change of a reaction using standard enthalpies of formation, we need to understand what a formation reaction is. So it's very specifically the hypothetical formation or synthesis of one mole of a compound from its elements in their standard state. So it's very important that the products have a coefficient of one. So here's an example, carbon dioxide gas. So you'll notice here that I have one or blank, meaning a one coefficient in front of the CO2. And the left side, the reactants, have to be the elements that form that compound in their standard states, meaning their state at standard ambient temperature and pressure. So at 25 degrees Celsius at room temperature, 100 kilopascals, so the states of the elements that you know at room temperature. So carbon dioxide is made of carbon, which is a solid at room temperature and not diatomic, and oxygen, which is a gas at room temperature and it is diatomic. So we write carbon solid plus O2 gas. Then we look to balance. Noticing that there's one carbon on each side and two oxygen on each side, this equation is balanced. If we wrote a formation equation for carbon monoxide, Again, it's made from its elements, carbon solid and O2 gas. And now when we balance, we notice there's one carbon on each side and one oxygen on the left side. Sorry, one on the right and two on the left. So you might be tempted to balance with a two. However, we need to maintain one mole there. And so if the fractions are a little bit difficult to deal with, then I would suggest you go through this process. So I'll just show the work here. Initially, I'm trying to balance this equation. I notice the carbon is fine. I need a two here for the oxygen, which now means there's two carbons on both sides. So the coefficients are two, one, two. But for a formation equation, this coefficient must be a one. So I'm gonna to need to divide that by two in order to get one. Divide this by two, which gives me one half. Divide this by two, which will give me one. So can you see where the one, one half, and one are coming from. So essentially, you'll probably do this work and then divide by the coefficient in front of the product so that you produce one mole of the compound. So go ahead and try to write formation equations for potassium bromate and benzene. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing the coefficients now of one K, one half Br2 liquid and three halves O2 gas. Again, if you had trouble with that one, just go ahead and balance the equation as you normally would, and then check the coefficient in front of the potassium bromate. If it's not one, then divide and by itself so that you do have one in, as a coefficient for the product. The benzene, we have six carbon solid and three hydrogen gas. Notice the states, right? All metals except for mercury are solids. Uh, in the nonmetals, we have one liquid, bromine, so we saw that show up here, Br2 is a liquid. Iodine is a solid, and both fluorine and chlorine above that in the halogens are gases. Nitrogen and oxygen are both gases as elements, as well as hydrogen. Everything else will be a solid. So know the liquids and know the gases. Everything else is a solid. Okay, moving on. So in order to motivate the development of that formula, I'm gonna ask you to draw on your previous knowledge now and first write formation equations for each of these substances here, ammonia, O2 gas, NO2 gas, and H2O gas. Um, so let's start with that. So do that first. So write formation equations, four of them right here. Write formation equations for each of these reactants and products. Then check back with the video. Okay, so we have balanced formation equations written for each of the reactants and products in the equation. Now turn to page 320, table 1, and look up the enthalpy of formation, the molar enthalpy of formation 
for each of these substances. So you'll notice NH3 gas has a molar enthalpy of formation. Now under standard conditions, that's why the little um, circle is there as a superscript. That just means standard conditions. So the enthalpy of formation under standard conditions for ammonia is negative 45.9 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and you can do that for each of these um, compounds. You'll notice that you don't find oxygen gas. In fact, you don't find any element in table one, and that's because the substance isn't changing. If you're forming an element in its standard state from its element in its standard state, then there's no change in the energy of these substances. And so we don't have a delta H value other than zero. So because it's an element, it's zero. So we can look up NO2 gas as well as H2O gas. So go ahead and do that and jot those down. So you will notice that state matters. Water vapor with a gas symbol and water liquid have different molar enthalpies of formation. And for sure, a change of state, as you've learned, physical changes involve an, an enthalpy change. And so yes, there will be different enthalpies of formation associated with the different states. So make sure you look up the one that is actually in the question. Okay, so now that we have those molar enthalpies, let's recall that when we want to use Hess's law, we need to have the enthalpy changes for each of these reactions here. So I'm going to call them delta H1, delta H2, delta H3, and delta H4. I put the little circle as a superscript because these values are from standard conditions. So going back to the enthalpy change data that we had here, we recall that we can calculate enthalpy change when we know a molar enthalpy, we just multiply by n, the coefficient in the equation. So I'll show you the first one here. Negative 45.9 kilojoules per mole of the ammonia. And then you look at your balanced equation, and in fact, you have one mole of NH3. And so if you're going to multiply by one, we're going to end up with the same value, negative 45.9 kilojoules. And so delta H1 is negative 45.9 kilojoules. Of course, that will follow because we're doing exactly the same calculation and all of these coefficients are one. So we're gonna end up with zero here, 33.2 kilojoules here, negative 241.8 kilojoules here. All right, so now you have your given equations and your delta H values. So go ahead and figure out how to manipulate those given equations so that you they algebraically add up to this target equation. And then write an algebraic expression for the enthalpy change of that equation. Okay, so you can see that I reversed the first two equations. And I understand that oxygen gas equation, you're probably thinking those are just gonna cancel each other out, so you're ignoring it. That's okay if you did that. I am looking to derive a formula, and so I'm being consistent. Any a substance that showed up as a reactant in the target equation, I made sure to reverse the formation equation. And that's why you see these two negative signs here. The coefficient in front of the ammonia needed to be there, and so I multiplied by four, and there's the four here. With the um, oxygen gas, I realize you probably just ignored that and canceled it out, but I'm going to show it with a seven there. And now the enthalpy change for the products, noticing NO2 and H2O are already on the product side and that they're in the product side of the target equation. I'm basically keeping them where they are. So there's no negative here because I did not reverse those equations, but you'll see I did multiply by the coefficients. And so in the end, the delta H under standard conditions for this target equation is going to come from negative 4 times the enthalpy change for the first equation plus negative 7 times the enthalpy change for the second equation plus 4 times the enthalpy change of the third equation plus 6 times the enthalpy change for the fourth equation. And so what I'd really like to do here is manipulate this, algebraically manipulate it to show you how we actually have a formula that would save us a lot of work. So I'm going to first factor a negative out of the first two terms. So if I pull a negative out of here, I'll have four times delta H1 plus seven times delta H2. 
and I'm going to factor positive 1, if you will, out of the next two terms. And so it looks like this. And now I'm going to reposition these terms. So I'm going to take the negative and what's in the bracket and just write that second. So I'll go back to the 4 times delta h3 plus 6 times delta h4 and then minus the second or what was originally the first bracket. Okay, so what I've actually done here is take the sum of the balancing coefficient and multiply by the standard enthalpy of formation of each of the products and subtract that from the sum of n moles in the balanced equation times the standard enthalpy of formation of the reactants. And so rather than do everything we just did with Hess's law, you can actually use this equation to calculate the standard or the enthalpy change under standard conditions. So this equation is a formula now that you can use instead of all the work we just did, but I wanted to show you how that would work. And so for our example up there of 4NH3 gas plus the 7O2 gas producing the 4NO2 gas and the 6H2O gas, if you're asked to find the enthalpy change for this reaction using standard enthalpies of formation, literally just need to look up the standard enthalpy of formation data in the table on page 320 and these, so this comes from, from page 320 and the n values are the coefficients in the balanced equation. So you just look up those coefficients. So to show you how this is written out then, I'm going to focus on my products first. So the balancing coefficient times the standard enthalpy of formation of the NO2 gas plus 6, the balancing coefficient, times the standard enthalpy of formation of the water vapor. So I would keep doing that. If there were three products or four products, I would keep going. Then I subtract, open your bracket. Now I look at the reactants. N, 4, the balancing coefficient, times the standard enthalpy of formation of the NH3 gas plus 7 times the standard enthalpy of formation of the oxygen gas, close brackets. If there were more product, more reactants, it would have kept going there. Okay, and so now I look on page 320 to look up these values. So I see that the standard enthalpy of formation of the NO2 is 33.2 kilojoules. And the standard enthalpy of formation of the water as a gas is negative 241.8. As far as units, I'm really taking moles times kilojoules per mole, so that's producing kilojoules for me. Then for the reactants, I have four times the enthalpy of formation of the ammonia, which is negative 45.9, plus seven times. I won't find the enthalpy of formation of an element, that's just zero. And so now you can complete this calculation to determine the number of kilojoules. And so now we finish with negative 1,134.4 kilojoules. So we have determined the enthalpy change for this reaction right here just by using this formula right here. So we derived the formula, which is why we used Hess's law, but now for all of these questions that will show up, when you're asked to find enthalpy change using enthalpy of formation data, just look up that table um, on page 320, write a balanced equation, and use those balancing coefficients. And that will give you then the enthalpy change for that balanced equation as written.